Hey everybody! In today's video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite things ever, art of the Southwest. I have these amazing terracotta pot dies. They are layering dies. I'm just going to show you how to decorate the top portion, which has this embossed detail that you can see. I've cut them out of white and black cardstock because I'm going to show you different techniques for embellishing both of those or either of those. Now, this is just plain white cardstock. It's not mixed media paper, watercolor paper, nothing. I'm just doing ink blending. So, I have kind of a warm, reddish, rusty tone that I am ink blending all over this die cut. And you can see how that really makes the debossed details pop. I know sometimes I say embossed. You know what I mean. But it really makes those little details pop out and will become super important later on. Now I'm adding a brighter orange over the top to truly get the look of terracotta. I think sometimes when people are ink blending, they forget that just the simple act of combining two colors to get a third color really makes your inks a much more versatile tool if you think about them like you think about watercolor and combining different colors in layers you can get so much more out of them and this is a perfect terracotta with the rust and the orange and thank goodness for my ink stand gosh okay so i'm going back to the rust and now i'm going to add some really deep shadows to make this look three-dimensional so i'm using my smallest honeybee brush and I'm just going from the paper onto the very edge of the vase to give it a deep rust colored tone and a lot of dimension. This works so well. I really like to do it with the smaller brushes though because it can keep me from going too far into the pot. So I'll flip that over so you can see how dramatic that is. Now I will do this on the other side and the bottom. Anytime something is kind of curving away from you, I talk about this a lot with florals. If a petal is curving away from you, if you have a round object like this vase, the edges are curving away from you, that's where they are going to be the darkest. You can just test this by looking at something in your craft room. Just look at the edges of the object and see where it's darker, and that's going to teach you how to shade. Now this die comes with another die that you can cut one more opening in. I have not done that here, but I did want to point that out about the die set. I have two new classes with these dies for creating fine art backgrounds, and I will put those in the description. These are $5 classes, and you can create framed prints with these beautiful dies by making some fun fine art backgrounds. Now the neck of this vase is going to be in shadow as well because that would be recessed a little bit and then the neck of the vase would come out. So I'm taking the opportunity to ink blend that and look how dimensional that looks. Some of these vases that I'm using will be used in my two new online classes so be sure and check that out. There will also be links to these on my blog in addition to down in the description. And I'll do a little video trailer for these classes as well. But these are such arty dyes and they remind me so much of my beloved New Mexico that I decided to create some wall art using these. And it's very easy and I think you'll find it fun. Now look how the center of that pops out and looks dimensional just with the shading at the edge. So fun. Why is that so fun? Now in this one, I'm going to shade this quite a bit darker because we'll be doing a different technique on top. So I'm really going in hard with full strength ink on this and really darkening that up. And I think you're really going to like the lighter treatment that I put on top of this that really makes the pattern pop out. This has almost a basket weave pattern on the bottom. This looks so much like a lot of the Navajo pottery that you will see when you travel to the center of New Mexico and a little bit south like I like to do. 
So now I will put that away and I will go ahead and do the same thing, warm it up with a little bit brighter orange just to change the tone a little bit. This will be more prominent in the areas that are a little bit lighter, but it will change the overall color. Be careful not to press too hard. I love these because they have such a delicate opening up at the top, but you want to make sure you have lighter pressure on your brush so you don't bend that little edge of the lid and look how gorgeous that is. Look at that basket weave detail. It's so pretty. So now I'm going to blow your mind. I have a little foam mat. You can use your misty mat. This is an old foam mat for sculpting paper that I've had forever. And I have my three by five gel plate set up here that I'm going to use as a palette. And I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of white paint on here. So I'll add a little bit, and really when I say a little bit, I mean just a little bit. Just put a little dot of that on there. You don't need much of this at all. Then take your brayer and sort of spread that tiny amount of paint over. This is why the 3x5 is so perfect for this, because I just need a thin layer of paint. Now with almost no pressure at all, I'm rolling over the vase. And what that does is highlight the light areas and keeps that beautiful terracotta color into the deboss details of this face. It's so quick. And let me show you on black how easy this is because you don't have to do any ink blending at all. You're just highlighting the pattern. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Look how beautiful that is. It looks so authentic. I just love it, love it, love it. Now in this one, I'm going to add more white paint just to kind of show you the difference between what I just did and one that looks a little bit more like it has a treatment on top of the terracotta. Look how the pattern transferred to my brayer. Roll that off in just a second and show you a way that you can make another pattern on another piece of paper. So again, thin layer of paint going over this really, really looks like pottery and adding just a bit more on here just to give it a little bit lighter look. And what's great is you get like this little texture in the paint and the cardstock that really, really, really looks like pottery. Like I can't tell you enough if you've never visited Santa Fe or the desert Southwest and seen this type of art, then you may not know what I'm talking about, but this looks very, very authentic. And against the fine art background that we're going to create in class, I think you're really going to love it. Okay, so I'm adding just a bit more paint here onto my gel press. Now I have a nice even layer and I'm going to add that top layer so that you can see what I'm talking about. Now this really looks like terracotta pottery. See that texture? And it's much whiter than the other one. Really different look. I'll do the same here. Add just a little bit more onto this pot as well so you can kind of see the difference and this really lightens up that terracotta ink underneath and gives you a completely different little piece of pottery. Now here is the last black one. You can sort of see the difference here in the double coat of paint on the larger vase versus a single coat on that smaller black vase and I just love it. So let me show you what it's like when you transfer the pattern that's on your brayer from brayering over these pots just to a piece of paper. You can do this deliberately and it's a lot of fun. So here I'm just going to turn the brayer so I get a full pot and you can see you get this fun transfer effect happening. One of the most fun things to do with your brayer. So don't forget that. You can do that all by itself as a technique. So here's the finished card I zentangled on one of these as well. Added the layering dies. Check in the description for my new classes. Head over to my blog for more information and a giveaway. And thanks so much for watching.